back to the channel and the college process. Once again, my name is Ed from Precipia Prep, and today we're gonna to be going over the benefits of establishing residency for out-of-state public universities and college. But before we begin, if you are new to the channel and you are looking for additional college content, please hit the subscription button down below. It will notify you of new videos when they come out, as well as hit the like button and also leave us a comment. It does help the channel. That being said, let's jump right into today's video topic, establishing residency for out-of-state public universities and college. Now, right off the bat, I already understand why many families want to establish in-state residency for out-of-state colleges, specifically the public universities, because of the cost factor, obviously. Here in the tri-state area, just to give you an example, if you are an in-state student going off to Rutgers University versus an out-of-state student, you're saving over $7 $17,000. And this is not just a Northeast thing either. In University of Delaware, as well as Chapel Hill, both the schools here, as you see here, if you're an out-of-state student attending these universities, your tuition will be $25,000 more. This is also the same scenario if we go across the United States to the West Coast and in between, you're going to see colleges here on the list I have here showing you now that cost over twenty five, dollars in some cases over $30,000 more if you're an out-of-state resident going off to an in-state public university or state college. So right off the bat, most families are looking to establish in-state residency, not so much from a financial aid point of view, but rather reducing the financial starting point of the university's cost, specifically from the tuition side here. Unfortunately, many colleges do realize this is one of the avenues parents are looking to essentially lower the cost. So they have been making it a little bit more difficult year after year to be able to establish in-state residency because in their eyes, unfortunately, good, bad, or indifferent, out-of-state students are typically a big revenue source. Also, another reason that tuition is higher for out-of-state students is because the in-state students, typically the families have been paying taxes to that state, which is basically where a large sum of the funding for the state colleges come from. So it's kind of a balancing act in a sense when you think about it from in-state parents paying taxes versus out-of-state parents not paying taxes. That's another reason why that out-of-state costs are a lot higher, unfortunately. Now, one other thing too, is not every state school is actually looking to make the process harder to establish in-state residency, believe it or not. It's actually easier in Nevada, New Mexico, as well as North Dakota, South Dakota, as well as Utah. These states have actually made it easier in some cases for students to establish in state residency, mostly because of the fact they're trying to attract younger people to the state and hoping that they stay there after they graduate. Now, there are a few ways to establish in-state residency, and almost all of them require some kind of appeal process. Now, to appeal with the college for in-state consideration, you typically need to send in a consideration of residency form to a committee set up by the university just to essentially evaluate in-state residency. This appeal, by the way, can be sent in every academic year. So if you are denied, you can basically, my way of saying it is just try, try, and try again. Now, for most colleges to establish in-state residency, they're going to want to see the student's parents, guardians, or essentially the people caring for the student or taking care of them have established residency within that state for at least 12 months or longer. This is typically the easiest way to actually set this up and actually the number one way to set this up because it's the easiest one to kind of get through and get the in-state residency if the parents move there. For everyone else, other than the people that can move to the state, let's go over the other ways of trying to establish in-state residency with the university. Now, the first thing you want to do is contact the admissions office. And the reason you're doing this is to, to first figure out how long do you need to be in that state to establish residency. This is very important because some states will require 12 months, other states will require two years. It's all different across the board, by the way. So it's always good to have an understanding, an idea essentially of what this university we're looking to establish in state residency is going to want from us right from the get-go. You can obviously do this in junior year in high school, sophomore year in high school, entering senior year, etc. The sooner you do it, the better you'll be educated to understand what is it time frame wise they want from us to be there, either the parents or the student. And once you've done that, I'm going to show you guys here. The next step is very simple. You essentially just have to go on to Google and type in the name of the school and residency reclassification. And as you see here, I'll use UCLA and what you'll see will pop up. But within the first four to five results, you're going to see, as I'm highlighting here on the screen, it's going to have next to one of the search results. You're going to see it's going to say PDF next to it. This is what you're looking for. The results pop up. And once again, you see here another PDF. Now, the PDF itself is going to be anywhere from essentially three to six pages long, depending on the university and or college it's coming from. This is the form, by the way, that you'll be sending into the appeal committee when you do the appeal for in-state residency. But right now, the form is not actually that important. Think of this form as essentially a cheat sheet, like getting a list for a scavenger hunt before the scavenger hunt even starts. Your goal is essentially based on this list here, everything is showing that it requires from you or items they do consider for in-state residency. Your goal is essentially to get as many of these items as possible. Driver's license, voter registration, lease agreement, rental statement, whatever it is you can get here. Insurance card showing your student has a car there. Having a student work in that state, i.e. create a state tax return. Think of it this way. 
the items on the list that you see here for basically establishing residency, think of it kind of as a point system. The more points you get, the more likely it is you're being able to get in-state residency. So you want to look at these forms early on, sophomore year of high school, junior year of high school, even senior year of high school, so that we can kind of put together a game plan if you are considering doing that in-state tuition or trying for it. What is it they're actually looking for? Now, even with this, and even starting the game plan early on and getting as many of these items as possible, let's say within the first year of your student basically settling in at the college, it's still gonna be difficult, believe it or not. Because in many cases, every school pretty much wants to see where the parents are living. Where they are is typically the key in getting that in-state residency or not getting it, or kind of being in that gray area where you might be able to get it or might not be able to get it. Because when it comes to residency requirements, the parent's location is typically key here for most appeals going through. Because of the fact that in the world of college, students under the age of 24, everything is still attached to the parent. Now you might be thinking, well, if my student turns 18 or 21, maybe we can deem them independent, living off camp, that kind of thing with a rental agreement or lease agreement. Now this does happen for some colleges will do accept this. But unfortunately in the mainstay of all colleges, colleges do not see your student as being independent at all until the age of 24. Because in the world of college, 18 and 21 actually mean nothing, believe it or not. It's till the age of 24 that actually independence is established by that student in the world of financial aid, really in the world of college, essentially. So I know some of you are probably thinking, well, what about emancipation? This might be a good idea for us to utilize to get us off our student stuff to be able to establish that in-state residency. I hate to be the bad guy here, but the reality is in the world of college, emancipation doesn't actually exist unless there were courts involved and there was some kind of transcript indicating abuse or neglect or something of this sort with court records, unfortunately. In that case, then schools will take that consideration and very likely provide in-state residency for the student as an independent student. That doesn't mean though that not every college will accept this. There are still some colleges that if the student lives off campus in that state for at least a two year time frame, some of them are still allowing this to be used as a way of getting in-state tuition. So it is something to kind of utilize, is something to kind of consider as an option to try to establish that in-state residency. Now, in addition to this, interesting thing is, if the parents don't move into the state, however, the student moves off campus and that off-campus housing is owned by the parents in that state, that is a key factor that in some cases does work. So if your student is looking to move off campus at some point in time and you are able to buy a property, let's say call it a second property, not your primary, but a second property, then essentially what's gonna happen is that second property can be utilized as establishing in-state residency. Now, what you're gonna notice is one of the biggest factors are either the parents or the student in any way paying state taxes. If you are, that's typically the key to get the inroads of getting the in-state tuition, by the way either paying in-state taxes by living there, i.e. you move there, or buying an apartment there for the student. Now, the third way of establishing this is essentially if your student is living there in the state, going to that college for at least two years typically, but they're also gonna want, in this case scenario, in many cases, unfortunately, that student has their own job. And typically they want to see the students making at least $25,000 or more with the establishment of living there as far as a rental agreement or lease agreement, you know, car insurance, the voter registration, so on and so forth. Even with those things for the third option, they still want the student to basically be working there and establishing a certain income level, which I said before is around 25,000. Once again, this all loops right back into, they want to see the state taxes. So you can see establishing state residency is not easy, but it's not impossible either. There is a possibility to establish it. And the three ways to try to establish it is, number one, that one of the two parents or both of them have to move to that state. Second way of establishing it is buying a property there and having your student lease or rent it there. And the third way of establishing in-state residency is essentially to go down the list here from the residency form and get as many of these items checked off, rotor registration, driver's license, lease agreement, et cetera. I tell parents all the time, if you are trying to establish an in-state residency, I would try every single year that you have the opportunity if you have things in place. Now, that being said, the ultimately last way of figuring this out is once your student's on campus, I always tell students, if you're looking to establish an in-state residency, on campus, there's gonna be somebody there who's already done it, who's been there for a year or two years, and I would talk to that student and ask them, which forms did you fill out? What items did you get to establish it in state residency because of the fact that they've already done it it's very likely if you copy them you'll also be able to do it so those are essentially the ways of establishing in-state residency if you have any questions or any concerns once again my name is ed zamora from Procipria Prep. On the screen is our contact information. If you'd like, you can give us a call or an email. We do help parents out with all facets of the college process. Other than that, thank you once again for watching our video.